Hi everyone, I'm Mike. This is the Sunday Art Show and this week I'm going to be painting the portrait of Floella Benjamin for episode 5 of Portrait Artist of the Week season 2. So I've started out with some mixed media paper and you can see I did a freehand sketch of Floella using this magenta watercolour marker pen and then I've gone back round with a mid blue making various corrections here and there. So the line work's pretty much done. And then what I've done for the background is a mixture of titanium white and cadmium yellow deep. And you can still see some of my kind of first iteration lines here. And now I'm just going to get painting. So I'm using interactive acrylics and I've got titanium white, cadmium yellow light, cadmium yellow deep, alizarin crimson, silurian blue, French ultramarine blue, and then tucked in the corner there, some burnt umber. So my first move is going to be to block in the flesh areas of the face, neck, and the little bit of chest that's showing there. So to start off with, <clears throat> I'm going to use cadmium yellow, yellow light and get a you know, fairly, fairly healthy amount of that. The brush I'm using, it's about three quarters of an inch wide, and it's just a synthetic acrylic brush. And let's grab a little corner of alizarin crimson on the brush and, and mix that in. So what I'm aiming for is a mid-tone. Okay, so you know it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just going to grab a little touch of ultramarine blue there. And a little touch more little touch of the alizarin crimson and then I'm going to add just a little bit of the burnt umber as well let's see what that gives us that's probably a good starting point so I'm just going to spritz the surface of the painting with the water spray and I just did the same to the paint on my palette as well and let's see what kind of effect we get. So it's coming out perhaps a little too green at the moment, I would say. So I'm just adding a little, the tiniest little touch of the alizarin crimson. But it's not a bad starting point. That's the main thing. So I took quite a lot of care with the, the second set of lines, the, the blue lines, being very careful to measure the relative heights and lateral positions of different features of the face. So I'm reasonably confident in those lines. Now, that's not to say that I won't correct later on. In fact, I almost certainly will. But for this initial blocking in stage, I'm just going to work fairly quickly. And when I can, I'm going to follow the contours of Floella's face with my brush strokes. But I'm going to trust those blue lines at the moment, so I'm working fairly quickly, as you can see. But I'm trusting those blue lines that I put down earlier. And because the thing is with acrylic, uh, as I'm sure most of you know, uh, you know, if you make a mistake, you can just paint over it. So if I if I find I need to improve things later, then it's it's not a big problem. If you're working transparently with watercolour then obviously you have to be considerably more careful and have a little bit more of a plan in the sense that um, if you cover up a lighter area with with darker paint you know there's no real way to get that back at least not with transparent watercolour so I don't have that concern when I'm working with acrylic I can make the areas lighter I can make them darker at any stage in the painting. Now putting on the paint as I am reasonably thinly, a lot of the initial line work is going to show through and that's actually to my advantage because you know I want to be able to see that underlying structure, the structure of the face that I took a reasonable amount of care to establish. And you can see this watercolour marker pen if I made the paint very wet, it would definitely uh, run a little bit and it, and it may be shifting just a little bit as I put the paint down, but it's not a big deal. 
And in fact, what I found with the watercolour marker pens is that some of them are far more responsive to a little moisture than others. Um, but the, this, this blue and the uh, magenta, they're both pretty good, actually. And, it, but, and that also depends which type of paper you're using. So if you just use really cheap paper, they tend not to run as much as if you use this mixed media paper. So, you know, it's, you've got to consider when you're using watercolour marker, not only the marker and the colour you're using, but also the paper that you're working on as well. But anyway, this is a painting, as I said, using acrylics. So that's that's probably enough chit chat about watercolour marker pens. Um, so let me just block in the shoulders and the neck and the top of the chest. Oops, now I went a bit, you can see I went a bit uh, off there. So perhaps being a little too eager to get things blocked in, but I can correct that later. Now, because these are the interactive acrylics, what I'm going to do is just spray the surface of the painting with water again, just to get it a little bit moist. Do the same with my palette. And then I'm simply taking some titanium white and mixing it into that color I had already. Perhaps just a touch of the cadmium yellow light as well, maybe a little bit more. And then I'm going to squint at my reference. And just begin to put in a suggestion of highlights in a very broad sense. So when I squint, I'm not getting overly concerned with the colour or any small highlighted regions. I'm just trying to look at it in a very kind of binary way. So am I looking at a dark area of the face or a lighter area of the face? And if I see a lighter area, then I'm applying this new, new colour, new tone. If I see a darker area, then I just leave that alone because I've already got the mid-tone down. And I'll come back in just a moment and do something similar with um, with the, the darker, darker area, so the deep, the deep shadows of the face. So the idea is to as quickly as possible. I mean, yeah, not, not that I'm in a, you know, in a, in a mad rush here, but when I say quickly, I mean efficiently more than the number of minutes it takes. What I'm aiming to do is establish a three dimensional structure in, in my painting. Now you can see I'm still working with the flat brush again. It's, it's about three quarters of an inch, three quarters of an inch wide. Um, and really, I find it's it's about trying to match the size of the brush to the size of the painting you're doing. So you don't want it so large that, you know, you're struggling to kind of use the edge and the corner of the flat brush. Because that kind of is an inefficient way to work. And you don't want it so tiny that, you know, from my point of view, at least that you're laboring away for hours and hours to simply block in a, a particular area. So the square brush or the flat brush is, is really adaptable because I can kind of slice along like that to get a narrow line. Obviously I can block, block in. I can do somewhere in between the two and go at kind of a, a diagonal angle and get a line of intermediate thickness. 
but then I can use the corner to put in little dots as well and make little shapes. So it really is, you know, it gives you a huge range of different marks that you can put down, all with one brush, so you're not having to constantly switch between different brushes. Now I said a moment ago I was going to do the shadows, but in fact I'm going to go lighter again. So all I've done is add some titanium white to, to the same mixture. And just going to put in some areas where I feel I can afford to add some slightly brighter highlights. And as I apply the paint, I'm still looking quite careful, carefully at the shapes of these highlighted areas. And the other thing to look for when you're doing a portrait is, you know, generally speaking, the face is pretty symmetrical. And in terms of establishing the basic structure, knowing those those rules of symmetry, for example, that the eyes are typically separated by the width of one eye approximately, and that the the height of the you know the top of the nose to the bottom of the, of the nose is about the same as the length of the ears. All all those things, you know, are, are good kind of rules of thumb to keep in mind. But at the same time, to ca capture the likeness of an individual. We have to look for the little asymmetries, the little things where this particular face deviates from that, that rule of thumb. And it's that which gives the face character and individuality. So now we need to switch to some shadow colours. Now the main shadow in the reference, or one of the key shadows, is there's a little cast shadow down here underneath the right hand side of the, the chin and the jaw. So I'm going to begin by mixing up that colour. I've still got my lighter tone on the palette. I've, I've washed, my, washed the brush out, which, which is something I don't always do immediately when switching from one colour to another. But in this particular case, because I'm going from such a light colour to such a dark colour, relatively, um, I, I need to do that. Anyway, so I've grabbed some ultramarine blue and some alizarin crimson. You can see I've kind of mixed up a pretty deep and dark purple there. So what I'm going to do is drag that through some of the mid-tone I had on the palette already and see what that gives me. So it's coming out a little bit green, but or it looks green on my dark palette anyway, the black palette. But when I apply it to the painting, it may it may be the right colour. So it may not be either as well. So let's let's find out. Let's find out. So this bit under the chin here, that's perhaps a little bit too dark, I can tell you that straight away, but I'm going to go with it. And you can see because I'm working a little bit wet in wet, as I drag the dark colour across, I got lucky and got some automatic lifting and mixing with the underlying uh, colour I had already. So that's actually working not too badly. I, I don't know that it's quite the right colour, but in terms of tone, it's not too bad. OK, so I've started to establish that. And now I'm looking at the reference and thinking, is there anywhere else I can use this same tone? Um, I, there is, but I think I still need to make it just a little bit lighter. So let's let's grab a bit more of that mid tone and mix it in and see what I get. So again, squinting at the reference, there is some shadow under the under the mouth here. You know, again, it might not be bang on in terms of the exact tone, but it's it's in the right ballpark. I can add some of that under this part of the, the jaw. Colour is wrong for the shadow under the cheekbones, but again, sticking with it for the moment. Just feathering the 
the brush down the right hand side of the jaw there. And I can use this same colour on this part of the neck. And on this shoulder here, there's some lighter shadow. And then you see I put that highlight in to indicate the top of the collarbone or the, the, the part of the collarbone which protrudes the most. And then the little hollow above the collarbone, there's a bit of shadow there. Along the top of the shoulder. We come to this side of the face. The shadows are slightly lighter, so I'm just adding a little bit of this. Where have you gone? I'm just adding a little bit of this slightly lighter tone that I used earlier, the highlight tone. So just to lighten the shadows up a little bit on this side. And then I'll keep going with that on this left hand side of the face. I think the paint's drying out a little bit actually, so I'm just going to spritz the surface of the painting with water. Just done the same to my paint on the palette. And because there are times I want a dry brush effect, but this isn't one of them in particular. Now, when it comes to the nose, obviously the nostrils are going to be much darker than uh, the rest of the shadow area, but I'm going to, going to ignore that for the moment and just block in the shadow under the nose as in as simple as a shape as I can create you know for, for this particular purpose. Now this same colour if I look at the hair you know Floella's got brown hair but there's a little bit of sh a little bit of um, an area here which has got a hint of this kind of greeny shadow in it and even down here as well so once again I'm just going to go with what I've got on the brush block that in and this color I'm hoping will become kind of a subdued highlight color for the paint I apply in a moment and I think yeah so I'm just going to use the same color even though it's wrong really to get an initial layer of paint down on the area of blank paper where the hair is going to be and you can see what I'm doing is I'm applying the bristles on onto the page onto the paper pretty flat and I'm moving my brush to kind of describe the way the hair is, is wrapped into this wonderful I'm not sure what the official hairdressing term is for, for the hairstyle but it's sort of you know it's sort of piled up on top of the head isn't it it's uh, very sculpted so I'm starting to automatically create contours and a sense of form. And, you know, to be honest, most of this perhaps won't show through in a moment, but um, nevertheless, it, it helps to helps to just cover the white paper. I may as well lose that bit of white there as well. OK, so before I go any further, I think what I'll do is just put some blue on the top. Now Floella's uh, top is the main reason I've got Silurian Blue on my palette, so I'm grabbing a good brush full of that, having just cleaned my brush, and a good dollop of the Titanium White. Let's spray the, the painting with water, and I'm just going to adjust the camera so you can actually see what I'm doing on this part of the painting. So, so apologies, my, my memory card filled up on the camera, which is a rookie error, so sorry about that. But all I did was block in this with the Silurian Blue and Titanium White mix. And then without cleaning my brush, I just added some Titanium White. And as you can see, just added a few quite literally random highlights and then just a broader highlight here and on this shoulder here. But let's go back to the face now. So I'm going to work on the hair next and I've switched to a little half inch wide brush 
grabbing some of the cadmium yellow light and mixing it into this dark shadow colour that I've already got here. Now a touch of the alizarin, it's perhaps a bit too much, but it'll probably be okay. And uh, let's see, well, let's see what that looks like. That might be too light, but we'll see. Uh, well, that's not too bad for the mid-tone. So just going to block in the mid-tone on the hair, keeping in mind again the direction of the contours, but not being overly fussy. And then while I've got that colour on the brush, I'm looking to see if I can use that elsewhere. And I think I can pop a little bit down here on the neck. And perhaps under the cheekbone there. And along this part of the jaw. And this colour would is almost, you know, almost going to help for the eyebrows as well so but I can before I get to that let's uh, let's put a little bit there I'll just use it as an initial block in color on the eyebrow so again because it's a flat brush it's not really the ideal brush for this but it's it's okay you know you can you can do a surprisingly precise job with a reasonably large brush Let's fill in that little bit of white paper showing. To add some deeper shadows to the hair, I've mixed up a 50-50 combo of burnt umber and ultramarine blue. Same brush as before. And if I get a little bit of mixing into that still wet uh, mid-tone I just did, that's great. That's going to help the illusion that we're creating here. And again, I'm still thinking in reasonably simple terms at this stage. Dark light to mid-tone. That's, that's all I'm doing. Now for this central part, oh, let me just add a little bit on, over here on the edge actually. Okay, so for this central part here, uh, it probably isn't this dark, but the little headpiece, tiara, or whatever the official term is, that's going to sit there later to make that pop, I'm, I'm putting a darker colour than there probably is uh, in at the moment. OK. Now, this same colour is going to be really good for the nostrils. And as good as the little flat brush is, it's, it's not going to be the brush for the job here. So I've switched to my little filbert. Same um, same colour as before. I'm just struggling to rest my hand here. So the filbert has many of the advantages of the flat square brush, but because it comes to more of a point, you can get an even more precise um, shape. You know, you can create more precise shapes. So I'm going to stick with this colour to put in the, the eyelashes. Now, I'm not going to attempt to draw individual eyelashes here. I'm just going to put in a, a line to indicate their general shape. So I'm thinking of them simply as a mass. So 
So we'll do a similar treatment on the left hand side. And I'm just adding a touch of white to this same colour. And this colour I'm using at the moment, it's not really appropriate for the for the eyebrows, but it's reasonably in keeping with the palette I'm using for the painting. So I'm just going to darken most of the eyebrow here on the on the right and leave the one on the left. Now the left hand one is somewhat lighter, but there's a little bit of a dark area there. Now for the irises in the eyes, I'm going back to this kind of mid shadow colour that I had before and mixing it in with some of the very dark colour that I just used. And again, staying, sticking with the filbert, let's block those irises in just simply as discs at, in the first instance. And We can do a similar treatment for the for the left eye. And then I've got that uh, patch of light blue here. So I'm mixing what I've got left on my brush into that. And I'm just going to drag that through the still wet disc of paint I put down to pick out some highlights in the iris and then that 50-50 mix that I used for the, the dark uh, shadow regions in the hair, the ultramarine and the um, burnt umber, I'm using that same colour to just, just a lick to, to put in the, the pupils. For the highlights in the eye, I'm going to use pure titanium white. Now the highlight on the left side is much bigger than the one on the right. So I'm going to put that one in first. And then I'm just going to do the slightest little touch, if I can reach it, on the right there. And with the little bit of titanium white I still had left on my brush, I just mixed that into the Silurian blue white mix that I used for the for the top Floella is wearing. And I'm going to use that as the initial coat of paint on the whites of the eyes here. Often I use uh, ultramarine blue for this stage, but I just thought it would be nice to kind of echo the colour that I used earlier. So the way I work is I try to bring all areas of the painting up together. And with that in mind, I'm now going to go down to the mouth. So in keeping with our Silurian theme, let's grab same little brush. Let's grab some of the Silurian blue. And just the tiniest touch of uh, alizarin crimson. And in fact, I need a bit more of that. still perhaps a little bit too blue. But we've got a kind of a mid purple. Let's see how that looks when we add it to the lips. So I'm using the paint in a fairly kind of dry way now. And that, that's way too blue. So it can be difficult to judge on the palette sometimes, um, or at least with the palette I use. So I've added a lot more Alizarin Crimson. Let's see what we get this time. Still looks way too blue, doesn't it? Yep, way too blue. All right, so we'll, we'll try and uh, come at that from the other direction. So I'm grabbing some Titanium White, Alizarin Crimson, and mixing those two together. So I've got, you know, 
quite a nice pink there. And then having done that, I'm just grabbing a touch of the Solarian I had before. And that's looking a lot more like it. So, or at least, you know, much closer to what I need than I had before. OK, so that, that's good. So that's quite a nice highlight colour, actually, for the lips. So we'll block in most of the lips with that. It's still not quite right, but I quite like it. I quite like the way it's bouncing off the surrounding colours. And I'm going to just grab some titanium white onto the same brush and put in some highlights within that damp paint that I just put down. Next, I'm going to grab with it with a clean brush some of the uh, alizarin crimson, mix that in with a little bit of the colour I had before, and a touch of the blue I had before. And I'm hoping that this will be an appropriate shadow colour for the majority of the lips. You know, might, might not be perfect everywhere, but. Uh, And that, that's not bad as a first stab. I think I need to darken some areas a little bit more. For, but for, I think for most of the lower lip, that's going to work reasonably well. Just grabbing a touch of ultramarine blue and putting that into the the colour that's still on the brush. Let's see if we can Just define the line of the mouth there. I need a bit more highlight colour here, and there's quite a strong highlight elsewhere as well. So back to the back to the highlight colour with a little bit more titanium white in it. And I can almost just add some of that down here as well. And I, I've never used this colour in the whites of the eyes before, this kind of light pink, but I'm just going to try it uh, on the left hand side here. And yeah, I, I quite like the way that's working with the underlying blue. So now I've switched to mostly titanium white and the Silurian blue. And I want to just add some bluey highlights here and there across the face, where, you know, where I feel it's appropriate.
so what I'm doing, you see, I keep, I'm keeping the shapes and putting down pretty simple, but I am being pretty careful about the line those shapes follow. So I'm, I'm following the contours of the face. I am mimicking in a simple way the highlights I'm seeing. But what I'm doing is I'm enhancing those colours so that, you know, they're obviously, then you know, you'll see in the reference, they're nowhere near as bright as the way I'm painting them. But again, as I've said in previous videos, you know, I believe, and what, one of the things I enjoy for my kind of art is that having used the, the reference photo to get things going, then at some point I want to depart from reality a bit and, you know, create my own world, as it were. And while I have that same colour on the brush, I'm just going to indicate the, the line that the necklace is following. And I'll come back and do a little bit more work on that later. So far, the majority of the palette is reasonably cool and subdued. Um, and I want to try something a little bit out of the ordinary, not out of the ordinary, I suppose, but just a little bit in the opposite direction for, for the hair. So there are some orangey brown highlights in the hair, kind of middle highlights. So as you can see, I'm grabbing a good amount of the uh, cadmium yellow light and mixing that in with one of the highlight colours I used for the face earlier. And, and then next I'm just gra grabbing a touch of the um, alizarin crimson. I think I probably want a bit more than that. So I've mixed up what is pretty much an orange. And I don't know that this is going to work that well, but we'll see. <laughs> we'll see what it looks like. Now that, that's way too bright. That's way too bright. Okay, so Let's get some more of the alizarin in there. We'll see how that works. So that's not really tonally appropriate. You know, in reality, it's much more subdued, but I quite like that, I think. We'll see, we'll see what happens. Now, one of the things this is doing, I hope, is making the shadows look a bit darker than they appear at the moment. Now the next question is, can I get away with using some of this colour on the face? Well, let's let's find out. Now the shadows in this region are actually much closer to the greeny brown than what I'm doing. But Again, I, I enjoy, I think the, the, the warm that I'm putting down now against the cooler shadow, I'm hoping that's going to work well for the painting. And I think the shadow under the nose as well here. A little bit in there. A bit here above the left nostril. And then here on the left cheek as well. So by layering our, our shadows in this way, we get a much more interesting effect than if we just, than, than we get with, with the initial treatment where, you know, I'm just putting down more or less a single colour. OK, 
get a bit of the, the warmth onto the neck as well. Uh, oh, sorry, you can't see. Let's just change the camera angle a little bit for you there. And what I can do is just use this colour to kind of make that little line of light blue for the necklace stand out a touch as well. Now, this shape here was not originally meant to be the little pendant, but I'm going to turn it into the pendant. Or if I if I did intend that, it was, it was subconscious. Um, And while we're down in this area, what I've done is I've grabbed um, mostly titanium white with a little touch of the, the light yellow. And we'll use that with my medium brush. To pick up some highlights on the necklace. Without going into a huge amount of detail. And then with that same colour, I can begin to suggest, and the same brush actually, suggest some of this tiara. Now, I've got to be a little bit careful here to get this reasonably symmetric. And I'm just grabbing a dollop of pure white on, on the same brush, just tapping in a couple of extremely bright highlights just to kind of create the illusion that the light is really bouncing around off, off of those diamonds or whatever it is. Now next, um, I've got this mid-orange that I mixed up before grabbing some of the light yellow, going into that light flesh tone I mixed and just picking up a little bit of the orange. And I just want to see if I can make that work. In certain areas of the face, just added a bit more yellow. the touch in the hair it's not really there but I just quite like the, like the the effect now for the earrings um, I've just picked up one of the dark shadow colors I used uh, earlier on in the painting and just going to block in their silhouette with that color 
and then the highlight color I just used on the tiara. Use on the earrings as well. And then going back to my filbert brush and a slightly darker version of the shadow color I used earlier, I need to enhance and refine some of the shadows around the eyes just to fully capture the expression. Next, back to one of the highlight colours that I used uh, on the face earlier. To just refine the shape of the lower lid a little. I need to do that on both, both eyes. And then while I've got that on the brush, I think I can use that same colour uh, here and there just to enhance. The sense of light that's playing across the face. And I think, um, let's put a little bit down there. I think apart from tidying up the background, I think I'm pretty much done. So here's a look at the finished painting. As with all my videos, if you click the link in the description below the video, then that will take you to a high resolution image and you can actually zoom in on different areas of the painting if you want to get a closer look at the brushwork. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. Hope to see you next Sunday. For the next episode of the Sunday Art Show, please remember to like, comment and subscribe and thank you very much for watching.